Today we're going to talk about hematopoiesis. What we want to look at for the cells are different changes in the cytoplasm as well as changes in the nucleus. Uh, the cells that make the red blood cells, they have a spherical nucleus uh, and then that nucleus becomes fractured, becomes condensed, and then ultimately get removed. Uh, in the cells that make the granules, the granulocytes, uh, they have an oval nucleus that then becomes more odd-shaped, maybe sickle-shaped, and then eventually a lobulated nucleus. When we look at cytoplasm, it starts out with a blue cytoplasm because all the ribosomes associated with uh, uh, the immature cell. And then as it produces hemoglobin, it changes from blue or more to gray uh, type and then ultimately red. Uh, and if it was a granulocyte, it would change from blue uh, to more gray where it has more granules in there and a loss of ribosomes. So that's what we'll be doing today. Hematopoiesis. Hematopoiesis occurs in bone marrow and the product of hematopoiesis are the blood cells and we can see uh, uh, lots of red blood cells. We can also see little platelets in through there, monocytes, lymphocytes, uh, neutrophils, host of cells we can see in blood. More neutrophils, uh, maybe eosinophils, certainly a basophil, and a couple of neutrophils that we can see there. And this all occurs in the bone marrow. In the bone marrow we see a, a host of cells. These are fat cells. You've got reserve space in the bone marrow for developing. In contrast, here we see a lots of red blood cells and another one over there, which is a little venule uh, inside there for cells to migrate in. We can see the neutrophils here with the uh, nuclei that are libellated nuclei that you see there and a host of other cells, round cells or oval shaped cells. When we look at the process of hematopoiesis, uh, we can see we have proerythroblasts uh, and down a series of basophilic, polychromatic, uh, and then uh, ortho orthochromatic um, erythroblasts, and then find a reticulum site, and then erythrocyte uh, is uh, what's released. If you come down to granulocytic series, instead of having spherical nuclei that you've had all the way until it dumped the nucleus, you have a more oval nucleus more oval nucleus and especially as it becomes um, condensed you have a lobulated nucleus for the granulocytes as we can see there. Monocyte comes down to make a macrophage, uh, T lymphocytes make a plasma cell uh, as we can as we can see. Uh, here we see the cells of bone marrow you have some younger um, proerythroblasts, polychromatic orthochromatic uh, we can see with starting with a spherical nucleus. In the bone marrow if you did an extract of the bone marrow you will see fat cells and you will see a host of other cells of different stages of development. Another item you see is a megakaryocyte that produces platelets uh, that you will see in the bone marrow and then you see some smudge cells as we we'll see over here these are red blood cells but the smudge cells that you just see the nucleus hanging again just the, um, the, the we can see uh, this particular one is a macrophage uh, that's uh, already phagocytized some things and then these are neutrophil there's a neutrophil right here um, and we can see a macrophage this whole thing here's a macrophage uh, and then we can see a lymphocyte is number two uh, here we can see some cells uh, in development. If it's spherical in shape, it will go to make a red blood cell. And here we see the most primitive, the pronormal blast, right in through here is this nucleus, deep blue cytoplasm. Uh, a basophilic normal blast uh, is one that maybe a little fracture that we can see there is not nice and smooth, but it still has blue cytoplasm around it. Polychromatic normal blast, the nucleus is more fractured, um, 
and you see some pools of, of kind of gray uh, as well as blue. So this is polychromatic normal blast. Orthochromatic normal blasts are those whose cytoplasm is, is pretty much uh, just hemoglobin located in there, not so much blue ribosome, but just a hemoglobin. Nucleus is very dark, being ready to be knocked out. If you look at the granulocytic series, you look at oval nuclei or non-spherical nuclei, uh, you can see a myelocyte, which has some blue cytoplasm, but nevertheless it has granularity already. Uh, then there is a, 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 a late myelocyte uh, in both of these, or this maybe would be a band cell ultimately to be released as a neuro. And so we see uh, the spherical lineage, or if you're coming down, one that is a non spherical shape uh, for the nucleus is a different type. Here we can see a pronormal blast, uh, deep cytoplasm, uh, typical nucleus, non fractured uh, nucleus, um, a basophilic uh, normal blast in through here. Uh, as we can see, polychromatic uh, normal blasts uh, are these guys which have blue and and um, gray within them as well. Uh, the myelocyte and late myelocyte uh, is the granulocytic series. You can see there's some blue cytoplasm in here, but there's also some granules already setting up, and here's mostly mature cytoplasm. Here we see red blood cells uh, that look red, but it is. Uh, late myelocyte, as you can see there, it has a blue cytoplasm, but you see some granularity coming in through there. Uh, and the late uh, uh, metamyelocyte, um, um, myelocyte, late myelocyte, promyelocyte, promyelocyte, and late myelocyte, and then uh, you see a, a mature neutrophil. So again, we can see uh, smudge cells, which is uh, just a nucleus that we can't see. Promyelocyte already got granularity there. Nucleus is uh, non spherical. Um, and then we see uh, these are metamyelocytes, ultimately produce band cells, myelocyte, as we can see. Uh, here we see a pro a normal blast. This is a spherical structure, and it will make a, a red blood cell eventually. Uh, we have the metamyelocytes and then the band cell. And you can see the granularity is becoming more granules as we go to the more advanced cell, nucleus become uh, more non-spherical and even lobulated as we go. In electron micrograph uh, 12A, we can see some of these cells. This is a polychromatic normal blast. See ribosomes, but there's also hemoglobin in through there. Most of these are polychromatic normal blasts because things kind of work uh, groups of cells. This would be a macrophage or a reticulum cell. You can't tell the difference in these. Uh, and this, this is an orthochromatic normal blast or erythrocyte. And here we can see where the nucleus is not quite popped out uh, yet in this particular cell. Uh, in the granulocytic series, we can see neutrophils with the azophilic uh, and the lighter ones, azophilic and the dumbbell shape specific granules in the neutrophils and this is eosinophil uh, has larger granules than a, than a neutrophil and also it has a crystalline structure uh, inside these large granules. So uh, orthochromatic normoblast is the uh, youngest one that we see. Reticulum site is what's um, produced, uh, released uh, from the bone marrow uh, as red blood cells and then finally they become erythrocytes as they go through the spleen and remove the uh, ribosomes and, and mitochondria that's uh, located in through there and then finally we have a uh, mature uh, red blood cell right there. Again we see a couple of immature um, uh, granulocytic series with the azophilic granules and the dumbbell shape uh, granules that we can see here, the specific uh, granules. Here we can, again, we can see the specific granules of these uh, cells. A reticulum cell here, 
and more mature uh, 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 neutrophil. In the bone marrow is a source of these and the f a fat, as we can see there, the lipid uh, in, within this fat cell uh, takes up some space and as you need more bone marrow development, you'll have less fat in there. Again, the fat cells, we have the, um, the uh, make a carrier site that produces platelets and usually it's pretty much located next to a blood vessel where uh, it can send out its projections to the blood vessel and they pinch off as platelets. Uh, this is another one of those electron, this is a light microscopic view of bone uh, marrow and, and showing you uh, the cells, um, this is the blood cells uh, in the little venial, another one in through there and we can see some of those are new, indeed neutrophils. Again, we can see white blood cells and red blood cells in a little capillary. Uh, neutrophils getting ready to marginate uh, into the blood. More neutrophils r right in through there is more granularity of some other cells. In the rib, we'll see bone marrow. We'll be able to look inside there and see some structures. You can see eosinophil. Um, you should be able to see orthochromatic normal blast. Uh, and see that some cells are round and some are not. In the, again, we see the, uh, the red blood cell development, uh, the bone marrow around the spicules of bone being developed. Uh, in this particular uh, slide, uh, 32583, uh, we can see uh, osteoclasts in through there, which would be eating up uh, cartilage and bone, and then we can see the bone marrow. Uh, back in there. Here's osteoclast right here, right here, right here, right here, uh, eating up the cartilage and bone. Inside there we can see a host of cells. This is its nucleus, the nucleolus, and there's the granules. So these granules that we see here, maybe eosinophil, maybe basophil, but you can see the large granulated uh, cells, and this is different from uh, the, uh, the neutrophil. Neutrophil has granules, but they're much smaller than what we're are seeing here. This is a megakaryocyte that produces uh, platelets. So these cells in through there, you see orthochromatic normal blast just about to lose its nucleus as you see right through there. Uh, and the cytoplasm is very mature and finally it gets very mature uh, as a red blood cell. Again, you see granules uh, in these granulocytic series. Uh, this is a blood vessel. We can see red blood cells. We can see neutrophils in blood, endothelial cells, and these are some other granulated cells. Could be eosinophils. Uh, we also another more granularity of these. Uh, also, uh, more development uh, of uh, the red blood cells. Again, over here as the nucleus is popped out of the orthochromatic normal blast. Bone marrow is a source of cells. This is a pro-normal blast here. A nice nucleus is not fractured and a, a, a sky blue small rim of cytoplasm. That is your earliest uh, uh, neutrophil, uh, earliest uh, uh, cell that's gonna make a, a red blood cell. Um, so uh, these are not spherical, so this is gonna be the granulocytic series. And here we can actually see some uh, neutrophils that produce some stab cells which may be reduced, uh, produced and released uh, if indeed uh, there is a, an infection. More of these cells, here's a polychromatic normal blast uh, which has both, and you can see some more of them, they have blue and kind of gray cytoplasm. Here we see an artist's drawing of bone marrow cells. We see some with spherical nuclei of varying sizes, and we see some with oval or odd-shaped nuclei as well. If we look at this series right in through there, we will see that that is the cells with spherical nuclei that will make red blood cells. And the most immature one is a large cell deep blue cytoplasm. You continue with the next one to have deep blue cytoplasm but a kind of fractured face 
a further fractured face as the cell is going to, uh, the nucleus is going to deteriorate from this, and you have blue and gray, then mostly gray, and then finally you have the, the red blood cell produced. If we look at these, again, the two artists' uh, rendition, but the pronormal blast has spherical nucleus, deep blue cytoplasm around it. Again, deep blue cytoplasm around this nucleus. Um, the basophilic normal blast uh, has a kind of fractured face. So the cell being smooth like this is fractured in nature as it begins to be more condensed. However, the cytoplasm is still pretty much the same. Deep blue cytoplasm that you see around there. The next stage down is the polychromatic normal blast. That is, there's more than one color in the cytoplasm. As a hemoglobin accumulates, uh, it dilutes out the blue and become blue-gray. And here we can see the artist's view of that with the uh, blue and the gray. And here's the real cell. You can see the blue on the outside and the gray is the hemoglobin. Again, you can see the gray and the blue, uh, the kind of gray and blue. Uh, and note that the these polychromatic normal blasts vary in size, um, but the cytoplasm is very similar with a combination of blue and gray, hence polychromatic. The next phase is orthochromatic. Orthochromatic, the nucleus is uh, condensed even further. In fact, it's in this stage that the nucleus is removed. The cytoplasm uh, is uh, gray, mature, because it has very few ribosomes in it. The reticulocyte uh, is the cell that's been re that will be released, uh, and it has a little bit of ribosomes and a kind of bluish tint to it. Whenever it goes to the spleen a couple times, it becomes a full red blood cell um, you know, with uh, with few ribosomes inside. Now, if we look at the artist's view of these again, we see these uh, oval cells, uh, different cells that's going to make uh, the granulocytes. Uh, and here we can see the ones with the blue cytoplasm, odd shapes, uh, kind of sickle shape, and then the mature forms of these for the neutrophils, and this is a basophil and an eosinophil. So if we look at the real ones, the cells of granulopoiesis, we see a promyelocyte, oval nucleus, deep blue cytoplasm, and some asiophilic granules, so it's not totally blue, you can see some granules in there uh, as well, uh, but uh, oval type nucleus. A myelocyte, the cytoplasm become increasingly mature as you get more uh, granularity uh, in there as the granules are being developed, but uh, still some blue scent to, to it and varying shapes uh, of, the, uh, of the nucleus. The, the uh, metamyelocytes is deeply indented nucleus with uh, nearly mature cytoplasm. So you can see de deep indentation, fairly mature cytoplasm. The band cell, which is a cell that's released, um, and that's a cell that's released whenever you have an infection and you need a lot of neutrophils uh, that, that you have. So uh, this one, uh, mature cytoplasm pretty much, but more of a sickle shape. The lobes have not completely formed. Uh, in the band cell. But mature neutrophil, it has completely libellated, complete uh, mature cytoplasm, as we can see. This is eosinophil, these two, uh, but it has completely libellated nucleus and mature cytoplasm uh, in those forms. More questions for you. Number six, which of the following stains allow you to visualize the stated structure? Hematoxylin and eosin? Nucleus and cytoplasm, yes. Tolutin in blue, mitochondria, yes. Periodic acid shift, or PAS, carbohydrate-rich basement membrane of smooth muscle cells, yes. The answer is E. Tasks that cells do that require cytoskeletal components is R. Division of cytoplasm in mitosis, yes. Change shape, yes. Move chromosomes? Yes, the answer is E. Major steps of platelet formation 
in blood clotting that requires enzymatic activity are blood coagulation, cascade of plasma proteins, yes, blood clot removal, proteolytic enzymes, yes, clot retraction, which requires cytoskeletal uh, contraction, uh, no. And so the answer is D, A, and B. Footsteps of evolution include fossil record, yes. Biological macromolecules similarly, yes. Comparative physiology, yes. The answer is E, all of the above. Pathways to protein evolution include point mutation of chromosomes, yes. Duplication of genes, yes. Alternative splicing of messenger RNA transcript, yes. E all the above.